Can we just celebrate God right now? Can we just give him all the praise? Man, it was incredible, wasn't it? Just a, an amazing, amazing day. And I want you to know I can't add any more to the just life transformational words that these baptismal candidates have shared with you. There isn't anything else I can add. But what I can do this morning is become a vessel for God because God wants to capture the imagination of every person in this room, just like what happened. God consistently looks for ways to open our minds so that we will hear what God is saying to us. It will change us. It will move us in his direction. In fact, that's exactly why God has put you here today. There are no coincidences that you are in this house. It is by God's divine will. Now, there are times when God is working and he has to work overtime to literally capture our thoughts. Let me try it this way. Are any of you hard-headed? Okay, I just want to check, right? So what, what we're doing, we're in a series called Build a Bridge, and it's about the core values of Bridgewater Church. These are our non-negotiables. These are the, the things that we believe biblically that God wants us to continually to focus on for this reason. If we're not careful, we can lose the vision and the momentum of what God is calling us to do. We can, we can actually literally drift. Do you know people who have ever drifted from God, right? Maybe, maybe you're sitting here this morning and you have had some drift. Or perhaps you're sitting here this morning and you're like, you know, I, I, I came to see this baptismal uh, uh, ministry, this incredible celebration. But actually, God is trying to capture your imagination. He's wanting you to literally hear him speak to you this morning. In fact, that's why we're doing... Anybody love Legos? Okay, just any fellow Lego builders, right? See, here's what I realized this morning, is that God wants us to begin to work with him, and that's why I love Legos. God wants us to build bridges to him and to others because he's capturing our imagination. That's why we began last week with this, this flow for the word bridge. I want you to see it on the screen and I want you to say it with me. At BWC, we are, are you ready? Blessed to bless, redeemed to reach, inspired to impact, discipled to develop, growing to grace, empowered to engage. And of course, I know you're sharp because you see the word bridge, don't you? I'm just checking, okay? God's capturing our imagination. Like Legos, he wants to, to use us to build bridges. He's reaching out to us, we're reaching to him. Last week, we realized that we're blessed to bless, but this week, this is what we want to concentrate on, and here it is. Will you say this with me, please? Redeem to reach... BWC will create a culture of sending God's people. See, I, I, like, I like this idea of bridge building and reaching because God wants to be very intentional even when we're hard-headed, even when we're struggling and the ground, as we saw last week, isn't fertile in our hearts. God wants to do everything he can to really plant seeds that are going to grow and keep reaching so that we keep building. There were two brothers and any, anybody ever have a hard time with your siblings? Just checking. Uh, maybe I should have asked, does anybody have a, do any of your siblings have a hard time with you? Just thought, just thought, okay. There were two brothers, they were farmers, they'd inherited a lot of land from their, their father and mother, and they separated the property. And they helped each other in everything, they were doing great. 
but just like siblings can do, become hard-headed and hard-hearted. And when that happens, instead of building bridges, you begin to build walls. And so they weren't getting along and they weren't speaking except to be rude to each other. Do you know any folks like that? And so one day a carpenter showed up at one of the brothers' home. This brother's name happened to be Pete. And a carpenter showed up at Pete's house. He needed work. And he said to Pete, do you have any work around the farm? I need some, some uh, uh, work. I need some cash. He said, sure. I know exactly what I want you to build. He said, there's a bunch of, uh, of lumber out by, uh, about by the barn. And there's a creek that separates my property from my brother's property. And I want you to build the biggest wall that you can build. Because I am tired of my brother. And I want you to build a wall so I don't even have to think about him. Even though I'm not sure how that helps. So the carpenter goes, I got exactly what you want. I get it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build. I, I will build something for you. Pete said, well, I'm going to be gone for several hours. You can get started. And when Pete got back near the close of the day, he saw something that blew his mind. What Pete saw down at the creek wasn't a huge wall. It was a bridge. The carpenter had built a bridge. And of all things, Pete's brother was walking across. He stopped right in the middle and he looked up and he saw Pete and he waved at him and he smiled. He goes, after everything I have said to you and about you and what you've said to me, I can't believe you're ready to forgive and forget. I am so blessed by this bridge that you have built to reach out to me. Well, Pete was flabbergasted. Pete, Pete was like blown out of the water. What do you do? He, he literally ran over to his brother and they embraced each, each other, and he said, I do forgive you, please forgive me. And then Pete turned back, and he looked, and he saw the carpenter leaving. He said, wait, wait, you've done such a great thing. I've got more work, please stay. And the carpenter said, this master carpenter said, I have to be on my way because I have more bridges to build. Now understand, hold on to this, are you ready? You, have, you may have made it so hard for God to reach you. You may be a person that you're like, you know what, after all I've been through, I've been hurt by churches, I've been hurt by pastors, my, my, my life has been a mess, I've been through so much. In fact, should we list everything that they mentioned up here? Should we list what the candidates said? Abuse, divorce, struggles, death, dying. Man, we can list it all. You may have decided to have all these things that you've put between you and God. And you may be convinced by the enemy of your soul that God can't reach you. But I'll tell you this, God won't ever stop trying. God wants to reach you because redeemed people reach. In fact, say it with me again. What are we? We're redeemed to reach. I love the story of Zacchaeus. Luke chapter 19. If you have your Bibles or your apps, it'll be on the screen. But Luke chapter 19. I want to talk to you about how much God loves you. Loves you so much, he wants to reach. And we're going to start. In chapter 19, but before we do, I want you to see 1 Peter chapter 1, because I want to get this firmly planted in your mind. Peter the apostle writes, since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors. But with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. Now, as we unpack the story of Zacchaeus, I want you to remember these words from the Apostle Peter. Because Peter says this, the only way that we can be redeemed 
is through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And here is what is so cool. I want you to think about this every time we talk about the short man Zacchaeus. I want you to grab this every time. The word redeemed means to liberate, to free, to pay a ransom for. I can't save myself. And Zacchaeus realized he couldn't save himself. And God wants to redeem us. In fact, I love this. It means to liberate. God wants to liberate us in order to set us free so that redeemed people can reach. Now look at this passage. Let's get started on this. We little man, as I learned to sing about so many years ago. You remember that song? You remember that? Anybody? Maybe you don't. I hope you don't. You know, that means you really, like, you haven't been in church. But if you're, a, if you're gray like me, Zacchaeus was a wee little man. Okay, you got it. Okay. okay. All right, here we go. Stay with me. It is fun, though, isn't it? All right. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. Now, let's just make this quick, but it's important. How many of you love paying taxes? All right? Okay, it's exciting. Kay came home from Florida last uh, over the weekend. She said, what'd you do? I said, I finished getting all our stuff together for taxes. Yay. So, here, here's the thing. Zacchaeus was a tax collector, okay? And he was wealthy, and this is how he got this way. Pretty simple uh, policy from the Roman government. Take as much as you want as long as we get our share. That's how it worked in that culture. Home base was Jericho. And so, he was constantly squeezing people for more funds. And that's why he's wealthy, but we also know this just from the context of the story. We know that Zacchaeus is not anybody's favorite person except probably people he showered with his cash. Okay? Now, I'm, I'm actually... Uh, I'm taken with this part of the story because I wish we had a little bit more, more of the backstory. Why did Zacchaeus decide that he wanted to see Jesus? Why is that? I'm curious about that. And even though I don't know the answer, here's what I do know. I know that in Jericho, uh, a, a, an impromptu parade line must have been uh, forming because they heard that this itinerant miracle worker rabbi named Jesus was coming to town. So they, everybody started together. They wanted to see him. There were people that needed miracles. They wanted to touch him. In fact, we lost one of our great evangelical leaders this week, Billy Graham. But our loss was heaven's gain. And, you know, I was reading in the news how no floats, no bands, they formed an entire route for miles just as Billy Graham's six-car grouping passed by. Can't even imagine what it would have been like for Jesus. Can you? Wow. If they did that for Billy Graham, what would they do in Jericho for Jesus? And Zacchaeus couldn't see. Now, this is a pet peeve of mine. This is really like bugs me. Why do the tall people stand in front of short people? That just bugs me. Does it bug you? Now, if you're a tall person, I'm not getting on you, but I'm like, look, some of us aren't as big as you. Quit standing in front of us, especially at a parade, right? So he can't see. He's just too short. He can't see. So he decides to climb up in a tree. And again, this is, this is where I'm prompted with a question. Why would Zacchaeus want to see Jesus? And there's a, a profound, but it's a simple answer. 
Will you say what's on the screen with me? Everyone needs to be redeemed. Well, now I told you, don't forget what Peter said, right? We can't free ourselves. Only the precious blood of the perfect lamb, Jesus Christ, that was shed for us. Only Jesus can set us free. Only Jesus can liberate us. And when I look at this story, here's what I realize. Every person needs to be redeemed. Hold on, whether they want to be or not. We all need it, whether we want to be or not. We all need to be liberated and set free. Because everyone needs to be redeemed because we can't save ourselves. You and I cannot save ourselves from our sin. We cannot save ourselves from our brokenness. We need a Savior named Jesus to do that. So, Zacchaeus climbs a tree. And then in Luke chapter 19, verses 3 through 4, it says this. He wanted to see Jesus. He wanted to see who Jesus was. But because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. Now, I, I got to tell you, I'm impressed by Zacchaeus for, for this reason. Will you say this with me? It's on the screen. To be redeemed, we must be willing to reach. Now, if you don't want to reach Jesus, then you, you get to make that choice. But if you decide that you want a Savior to, to redeem you, if you want someone to liberate you, if you're tired uh, of, of living life the way that you're living it, and you want this incredible joy and peace that only Jesus Christ can bring, then to be redeemed, we must be willing to reach. We're right back to Zach. Right? Little Zach. Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus climbs a tree. Now wait. He's wealthy. People know how he got his money. He's despised. He's been ripping people. Listen, if you're ripping people off, do you climb a tree and become a target? I mean, you know. When I was in trouble, I didn't climb a tree and go, Mom, I'm here. I didn't do it. Right? And so... He, he climbs a tree. He, he gets up in this tree because nothing else is working. Now, hang on to this. If we want to be liberated and set free, the only thing that will do that is a relationship with Jesus Christ. And don't, you, you, you and I can't afford to let anything get in the way. Inwardly, inwardly Zacchaeus was empty, even though outwardly he had all of this cash and this money. Inwardly, he didn't have it. It was an emptiness. And then something, he, look, look at how the scripture's written. It says he wanted to know who this Jesus was. Listen, the minute that you and I start out, the minute that you and I venture out in climbing trees to see Jesus, when you start reaching, God is reaching back. You can't forget that. But you got to let all this junk get out of the way. I'm All the stuff that's in your head. The junk about you're not good enough. Gee, God could never save you. Or how about this one? I'm just fine the way I am. Nobody's fine the way they are. We need a savior. And that's what I love about Zacchaeus. The only way we're ever going to see Jesus is to boldly, shamelessly, audaciously climb a tree and reach and realize that Jesus is reaching back. I was reading, this, this was uh, an incredible story. In Armenia, there was an earthquake back in 1989. It was an 8.2 earthquake. And this blew my mind. 30,000 people died in four minutes. Isn't that wild? In the midst of the devastation and the chaos, there was a dad who had taken his little boy to school. He made sure his wife was fine, but as soon as he could, he got to the rubble. He went into the rubble, and he thought, where do I start? Because the school was flattened. So he goes to the back to the classroom where he had, he, he had 
remember dropping his son off day after day after day. So he started picking boulders. He started picking boulders. Other parents came, and they're, they're devastated too. But isn't this amazing? Nobody helped this dad reach. Nobody helped this dad move stones, but he did it. He just started doing it. People would say, it's no use. They're all dead. This dad said, are you going to just stand there or are you going to help me? Are you going to help me reach for them? Then, then the fire chief came by. He said, you're going to have to move. You're in our way. He said, it's, it's of no use. They're all dead. You, I know you're devastated, but you've got to leave. He said, are you going to stand there or are you going to help me reach? Then the police uh, came by. They said, we're going to have to escort you off the property. He said, you can try. But he said, nothing is going to keep me from doing what I promised my boy. And I promised my boy every day that no matter what, I would be there for him. He could always count on me to reach him. He dug. He dug for, for four hours. He dug for eight hours. He dug for... 28, 20, 24 hours, he dug for 36 hours, finally in the 38th hour. He had been just rubble by piece of concrete. In the 38th hour, a hole opened up, and all of a sudden, he heard his son's voice. He called out, he said, Ahmad, are you there? He said, Dad, I'm here. I told everybody that you would keep reaching for me. You would not let me go. His dad said, how many of you are there? He said, Dad, there's 13 of us alive. He said, Armand, you come out first. He said, oh, no, Dad. He said, get all the other kids to safety first. I know you won't leave me where I am. I'll be here reaching for you. To be redeemed, what? We must be willing to reach. Zacchaeus was willing to reach. Look at chapter 19, verses 5 through 7. This is what happens next. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he is gone to be the guest of a sinner. There's two extreme parts to this. This is such a huge contrast. Are you ready? So here's Zacchaeus. Jesus looks up in a tree and sees Zach. He goes, Zacchaeus. Now, how many of you would have thought that probably blew him away when he called him by name? I was flying from Oklahoma, and uh, this was several years ago. And we're on a little puddle jumper. You know what that is? We're not going far. And I think I was flying to Dallas to get a connecting flight. And I saw a pastor I knew, very well-known pastor, Pastor Stan Tuller. And I saw him, and I had met him years ago. And I said, God, it would be so great if I could sit by him on the plane. And uh, just if, that, if you'd let that happen, I'd love to sit by him on the plane. And he had a bunch of other people with him. And so when I got on the plane... Pastor Toller got on first, and so I was walking back, and guess where I got to sit? By Pastor Toller. Now, I was excited. I'm not sure how Pastor Toller felt an hour later. But when I looked at Pastor Toller, I said, Pastor Toller, I met you years ago. I'm sure you don't remember me. He said, your name's Drew. It's good to see you. Don't think for a minute that God doesn't know who you are. He knew who Zacchaeus was. And he said, Zacchaeus? Let's go eat at your house. Now, here's what I love. Zacchaeus could not wait to get out of that tree, right? Did you see what it said in the scripture? It says he came down gladly, right? He didn't go, eh, you know, you're not all that I thought you'd be, right? From up here, you're just as short as I am, right? He didn't do it. He is so excited, he comes right out of the tree, and he begins to, to talk to Jesus. And of all things, Jesus could have had this great connection with Zacchaeus right there, right? But he goes, let's go eat at your house. And everybody heard it. And it says in Scripture, people started to mutter. That's code language for they're talking about you. How many of you have ever had people talk negatively about you? 
Now, I always love to pair that with, how many of you have ever talked negatively about somebody else? But that's another message. So, here's this cool thing that happens. He's going with him, and this is what blows my mind. Even though the crowd grumbled that Jesus was going to go eat at Zacchaeus' house, immediately this is what God wants us to understand. Redeemed people aren't perfect people. Jesus did not come to connect with people who are perfect people. I don't know about you, but that makes me very happy. Does it you? For all have sinned and what? Fallen short of the glory of God. If you're sitting here this morning and, and you're still trying to figure out what just happened to you and how you got here and what's going on, realize this. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, God is definitely speaking to you. Why? Because he knows you're not perfect. He knows that you're not where you need to be. And yet, are you ready? He still loves you. He still wants a relationship with you. Because redeemed people are not perfect people. Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. And I love this. And as much as Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus, Jesus wanted to see Zacchaeus. Listen. We are redeemed to what, church? Reach. Say it again. We're what? Redeemed to reach. And Jesus keeps reaching to us because he wants us to have a personal relationship with him. And then if you look at verses 7 and 8, this is what's next, and this is so awesome. All the people saw this and began to mutter. He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Now, I want, I'm going to get a drink of water. Are you okay with that? And I want you to think about who you sat with in high school to eat at lunchtime. Go ahead, think about it. Okay, were you a popular kid? Uh, this is great for our students, right? Who do you sit with? Do you like the people you sit with at lunch? Right, why would you sit with people you don't like? But did you ever realize that who you sit with at lunch kind of defines you, right? I mean, popular kids usually sit with the popular kids. Have you ever heard a popular kid go, you know what? I'm tired of popular kids. Let's go find somebody who wants to be alone and is unhappy. Right? I mean, this is what blows my mind about this whole story. Jesus, Jesus reaches out to Zacchaeus and he doesn't care that who he is going to eat with will define him. You know why? Because Jesus is the one who saves people. What people think about you won't save you. Your reputation is, is important, but whether people like how you are, who you are, what you do, only Jesus can redeem us. Only Jesus can set us free. And redeem people, what's it say? Redeem people, reach people. Blows my mind about Zach. Zach, Zach gets the people, you know, he doesn't know a bunch of redeemed people, so he fills his house up with a bunch of sinners. Don't you love that? I do. I think it's the coolest thing. Zacchaeus was willing to put people in his house who needed Jesus, and that's where Jesus wanted to go. And then Zacchaeus does something that blows everybody's mind. He stands up, and Zacchaeus says to everyone, I am giving up four times, I'm going to pay back four times what I stole. Well, you know what? Even in Jewish law, 
you didn't have to give back that much money even if you stole it. So he's like doubling it. I'm going to give it back. And then he goes, I'm going to give every the half of what I own. I'm going to give it away to the poor. Now, please grab this, all right? This is important. When we look at this need to be redeemed, once you and I are redeemed, once you and I are redeemed and God invades our heart and mind, do you know how you're going to know? Do you, this, this is it right here. What's, what's the be in bridge? We are what? We're blessed to bless. Now, I know this is about money. I get it that for Zacchaeus, it was about money. His, his thing was how wealthy and rich he was. I don't know what it is for you. I don't know. Maybe it's about your stuff. Maybe it's about your cars. Maybe it's your time. I'm only going to do with my time what I want to do. Maybe it's an attitude, right? Maybe it's about your mindset and what you're doing. But here is what is so awesome. In this story for Zacchaeus, God is invading his heart. He's redeeming Zacchaeus right there at lunch. Right at lunchtime, he's redeeming Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus is, Jesus is reaching, and Zacchaeus is reaching back. Wow, God's reaching, but all of a sudden, Zacchaeus is reaching back. Woo, man, I'm telling you what. He's like, you can have my house. You can have my friends. Oh, I know. You can have my money. I don't know what it is for you. Maybe you're always worried and concerned about what people think about you. If you, if you want to get redeemed, give it to Jesus. Maybe you're concerned about what job you have. You know what? Give it to Jesus. Whatever it is, when Jesus comes and knocks at your door, for heaven's sake, let him in. Because that's what scripture says. He'll come in and eat with you and you with him. Let him have, let him set. Listen, listen. Zacchaeus had been eating from the fast food line. Now he's eating at the feast table of Jesus Christ. Please understand this. Please get this. Redeem people, reach people. Zacchaeus didn't need a house full of people who was labeling everybody sinners. Everybody at Zacchaeus' house knew they were sinners. And you know the beauty of sinners? You know what we realize? That redeemed people aren't perfect and we need a Savior who can save us and only Jesus can do that. And the moment that we reach to him, he's reaching to us. And when the connection is made, it will change our lives forever. Jesus reaches us and redeems us, are you ready, to send us. There are people in your life right now, there are people in your life right now that need you to be the one reaching to them on behalf of Jesus Christ. And if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you're just like Zacchaeus and that's a beautiful thing because then you're just in the right spot. To be reached. And then this is what we end with. This is just a great scripture. 9 through 10. Jesus said to him. To Zacchaeus. Today salvation has come to this house. Because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek. And to save the lost. Now. <laughs> this is so awesome. You can read this two ways. Jesus came to Zacchaeus' house. And Jesus is salvation. So salvation was at lunch. It's pretty good, isn't it? Right? I don't know who you're inviting over for dinner, but Jesus is a good invite. But I like how it's really the depth of it. Jesus looks at Zacchaeus, and it's not because he gave up his money. It's because Jesus invaded his heart, and he gave his life. Jesus redeemed Zacchaeus. Today, salvation has come to this house because the house he's talking about is the heart of Zacchaeus. It's incredible what he's done. And when I look at this, here's what I realize. The gift of salvation was not given to Zacchaeus because he was willing to repay what was stolen. Zac found salvation. Zacchaeus wanted a personal relationship with God. And Jesus was able to reach him because Zacchaeus was reachable. And then he redeemed him. 
One of my favorite stories is about a pastor living in Minnesota years ago. His name is Tom. Late in the evening on a very snowy, blizzardy, cold, icy night. Pastor Tom got a call from one of the folks in his church. I'm in the ER, Pastor Tom. I'm going to have to have emergency surgery. It's my gallbladder. I know the hour is late, and I know the weather is just not very nice. But would, could you come? And as pastors do, we put on our coat, we wrap up, and we get in our cars and drive to the hospital. And so he, he was with him. He's coming back. It's really late now. And to get to Pastor Tom's house, there was kind of a, a, a back road. There wasn't much going on, especially that time of night. And he saw a car off the road, and it was running. You could tell the, the lights were on. It was running. So he stops, and he pulls over, and he says, hi. He says, are you doing okay? And, and, and a, a man rolled the window down, and he was wheezing. Tom knew that it was a struggle for him. And he said, well, we hit an icy patch. We pulled off the road. Somebody picked my wife up, and she's going to go get a tow truck. And Pastor Tom said, could I wait with you? Do you mind? And he said, no. He said, I, I enjoy the company. So he got in the car, slid in behind the, the steering wheel. And this man, his breathing was so labored. He was struggling. And Tom said, I can see you're not well. He goes, we got a late start from the hospital. It took us a long time to get here. I'm trying to get home. I have lung cancer. The doctors don't give me a whole lot of time. Tom knew it was a divine moment. It was time to build a bridge, and it was time to leave. So Tom said, well, have you, have you ever heard about Jesus? Do you have a relationship with Jesus? He goes, you know, I've been thinking a lot about God lately. And he said, I just, I don't know how to get to God. How do you, how do you get to God? And Tom began to share. And then there came a moment when the man said, I want God, but I don't know how. And Tom read this verse from John 5, 24. He who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment but is passed from death to life. Pastor Tom prayed with this man. His name was John. And in that moment, John asked Jesus to be his Savior because Jesus had been reaching to him. And now, John was reaching and then he said this, he said, Pastor Tom, I've been waiting for you for such a long time. I have been waiting for you for such a long time. Folks, listen, listen, I, I, I just want you to understand there are people in your life that God wants you to build a bridge to, people you know and people you haven't even met yet that God wants you to build a bridge to. Because they're waiting to find the only Savior that can save us from our sins, Jesus Christ. And God's asking you, build the bridge. I had somebody ask me after first service, they said, I'm trying to reach some family members, but their, their hearts, they're so hard. It's like last week, the soil is so hard. I said, it's not up to you to till the soil. It's just up to you to build a bridge and plant the seed. Listen, church. You've got to keep reaching. And if you're here in this room this morning, please understand this. It is not a coincidence that God wants you in this place. God wants you to keep reaching, and I don't know what's in the way. I don't know what you've kept in the way. I, I don't know what you keep, what obstacle you keep trying to put in the way between you and Jesus. But I want you to know, nothing that's between you and Christ is worthwhile to hang on to. 
You got to let go of it. You got to give it to him a habit, bitterness, worry, frustration, fear. Just come to a moment where you go, I want liberation. I want freedom. And let Jesus reach 